Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, come on in. The Friendly Flipper Academy coaching call. Come on in. Thursday, August 15th, 2019. Here we are. We're talking about, I'll tell you what we're talking about shortly. Come on in, roll in here. Today's lecture is on effective meetings. Effective meetings. We're going to give it a few minutes for folks to roll on in. It's been a busy week here. We've got projects. Pending purchase, we've got projects under renovation, we've got projects on the market, we've got projects ready to be walked through, appraised and sold and put on the market. So we are rocking and rolling here. And the objective of this call is to get you rocking and rolling too, because anybody can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. That's a knock on me, not on you. All right, so come on in, drop questions in the chat box. I'll be sure to answer those um, at some point during the call today. We'll give folks a little bit of time to jump in. In the Facebook group, in the Messenger, make sure if you're watching on Facebook, you show some love and you show a heart and a like and drop a comment. What makes these calls all the better, worthwhile for everybody, including yourself, including the other students in here, is the questions that are asked. Those are the most powerful things in this call, even more than what I have to say. What I have to say, great, but when I can answer questions, because you're not the only one answer, you're not the only one wondering that at wondering what the answer is to that question. You are not the only one who will watch the replay who is wondering that question as well. And social media tip of the day. So social media tip, okay? When you go live on social media, when you go live on Instagram, when you go live on Facebook, don't hang around and wait for people to show up start talking right away, get right into your message. There's a couple reasons for doing this. Number one, most of your views are going to come from replays after it's shared out. Number two is it's rude to the people that are on there actually watching you live. So get right into your message. As you'll know, as you noticed, if you're watching the replay, we got right into it today. We got right into it started talking about what we're talking about today. So that's the social media tip. Most of your live on when you go live, most of your people are going to watch the replay. So get right into your content and people can always go back. It'll keep the length of your video shorter too as a bonus and people will check. I'm sure you check, you know, you go down and you look at, you put your cursor on this on the bar to see how much time how long is this video so it's going to reduce the length of the video for what that's worth uh, that may encourage people to stay in there longer um, but it gets to the point and there needs to be a shift a global shift around the urgency and like what time is worth like what time is really worth people waste time like it's like like they're rich with time and all of, and the crazy thing is we're all pretty much, well, not equal with time, equal in a day, equal in the day that we're able to use it, that we're alive and well, but we don't know how many of those days we have, obviously, but we spend time like we're, it's like no problem. At least I did for a long time and I still do, but now I'm much more conscious of it. I carry this thing with me actually starting how nerdy is this? Well, who cares? I'm getting more efficient. I started carrying around this stopwatch that I got off Amazon um, for the purpose of tracking where's my time going? Where is it actually going? Because you can only get so far with the actions that you're currently taking. And then you've got to make adjustments and you've got to make changes 
to get to the next level. So I got to the point where I was feeling pretty kind of tapped out where it's like, I'm working almost every waking hour of the day on different projects. Um, some of it towards house flipping, some of it towards academy stuff, some of it towards other projects um, and enjoying all of it, but not getting that level of growth and push that I was. So then you have to reevaluate, okay, so how can I rearrange what's going on? How can I operate more efficiently? How can I be more effective? And that's part of what we're talking about today is effective meetings because we want to make the most out of every single second of every single day. And so what this has done is brought some light to how, how long things take. Um, the process of go, walking um, from, shoot, from my office to the gym right down the street. I know now that takes about seven minutes from my office to the 7-Eleven. It's about three minutes and 25 seconds, give or take. So, I've, and how, why is this information necessary? Well, it kind of just opens your eyes to what, how long things take, like realistically, because time is such a perception we think we know we can be good estimators of time and oftentimes we are. Things obviously influence that if you're under the influence of something alcohol or something else like you're like time gets confused right if you have no watch and you're on an island and you're disoriented like there's only a few days probably you're going to be able to track like that have gone by before you kind of start losing track of time or maybe you can track every sunset and sunrise I don't know. But the way we perceive time is influenced by how we feel about it. And the numbers don't lie. It's another thing where how we feel about something or actually more about how we perceive it influences what we think the actual results are. But if we actually measure the results, you can't argue with that. So if I want to be able to op operate as efficiently as possible, if I want to be able to put my minutes to use each day in the most effective manner, I need to know how long things take. So that's why I started timing things. So interesting experiment. I encourage everyone to dive in deeper to the area of their life that they want to improve. So I want to get more efficient at time. Boom, I'm diving in deeper. How do you dive in deeper? Deeper, you start tracking stuff. Um, and that's one way to do that there. To be more effective, to be more efficient. So drop any comments you may have in the chat box there and we'll answer those towards the midpoint in the call, end point in the call or wherever they fit in the call. <clears throat> so effective meetings, <clears throat> we'll get right into it. One of the biggest takeaways from the corporate world for me was effective meetings. And this was pointed out, I re clearly remember the moment. It was a meeting with the district manager, brought all the sales managers in from the district, the stores, about six different stores. There's two to three managers at each store. So we're talking like, you know, 20 of us, 15, 20 of us sitting around this table. And we're talking, we're doing this thing. Uh, one of the, one of the, one of my peers is leading. Um, and the district manager recognized how effective the meeting was being ran. Um, cause we got off task, started to talk about something else as often happens <clears throat> when you're having a conversation in a meeting. In a healthy meeting where you're having a conversation, there's ex exchange of ideas flowing, which is what you need because that's action, which is moving towards progress. There's the ability to get off task. I mean, you can easily, that can carry into something just naturally. And that's fine because you're, it's flowing, but we want to stay, be able to stay back on task. And it was, she was recognized as that was very, you know, that was you effectively ran that meeting, nailed it, kept everybody focused and, and just kind of that 
seeing that in real life as it happened, but also having it pointed out to me, that's when it really cemented in my mind what was actually happening, you know, because I'd sat in so many meetings before and some were good and some were bad, but I didn't really understand why so much. It was just like you walk away with the result. You're like, oh, that was good or that was bad feeling, but you didn't really, like, I didn't really know what to contribute it to. But right then and there, it was like the meeting was kept on task. The, the, the person running the meeting kept the meeting on task. So number one, first and foremost, why are you meeting? Why are you coming together? <clears throat> you've got to have a reason to meet and there could be many reasons. Obviously there's one reason to meet could just be to meet, to talk, but Ellie, but that's a reason, you know, to, to talk like to the, what would be the point of talking? Well, to communicate, to get on the same page about something. You could meet to resolve an issue. You could meet to figure out a marketing strategy. Those are all two specific things. Like, so why are you meeting? Like, you know, what's the point? What is, and the why should relate to what you're trying to accomplish. You know, what's the point of this? So really think about what, what do you want to get out of this meeting? What objective main or objectives along the way do you want to extract, you know, what do you want to come of this? What do you want this meeting to produce? So why, why do you want to be there? Have this vision of why overall, and then craft your outline around that. So why do you want to be there? Or why do you want to meet? Hopefully you want to be there, but why do you want to meet? What's, what do you want to accomplish? So, To accomplish what? Another way of asking yourself why is to accomplish what? What is it that we want to accomplish? So then now <clears throat> we have an overall idea. We want to set our outline and agenda around that. I say outline agenda because it is really both those two things. Um, with, with the most effective meetings, there's involvement from everybody at various levels, but there's involvement obviously from the person running the meeting. The person running the meeting may be the main presenter. They may not be the main presenter. They might be the facilitator and who you know keeps the keeps the meeting going but we want either way there to be a clear agenda so people know what we want to accomplish here today and we want resolution. That's the key thing. We want resolution for items. We don't, we want to come across each item, figure out what's the plan, what are we doing about it, and then check it off the list. Okay, we've got this in place to take care of that. So the goal is resolution. That is the ultimate goal is resolution because resolution lets you keep moving forward. If you need a resolution on something, you're stuck. There's something it's, you need something. You're, you're not moving as forward as quickly forward as you could be, or you might be completely stuck. So the whole thing is you want your, your business to have as few things dragging you down as possible. 
each little thing might just be dragging you a little bit, but 20 or 30 little things, it's going to start wearing. It's going to start slowing you down. Even if you've experienced carrying around a very a light weight, uh, even like a 20 pound backpack or a 10 pound backpack or, or you know, anything in there for an extended period of time, you feel it, it wears on you. So in the same way it does your business or your life in, in general, but specifically around your business, our goal is resolution. So what are the things that we want to resolve? And any very effective meeting has two way participation. Um, if it's not, it's more of a lecture. Like right now, this is lecturing. I'm lecturing because there's not two way communication. It's not, it's not considered a meeting. That doesn't mean that one person might, a meeting might consist of me speaking 90% of the words in there, but I think that could be less, I, you know, 80%. Like there needs to be interaction two way and it doesn't have to be like, say 50, 50, it's going to depend on the meeting, obviously but there always needs to be, it can't just be a one way thing or that's just like the, who, everybody needs to get on board with the resolution. Everybody involved needs to be, needs to either contribute or get on board with it or be a part of it somehow for it to work, for it to flow. So there's gotta be, there's, I can talk and talk and talk, but if my partners aren't are on board with what's going on, it's only half, we're only halfway there. It's not, there are not two pieces. It, it takes both to have, to have these resolutions. So what do you want to figure out? So your outline agenda basically should look something like this for an effective meeting. And pro tip slash tip in general, the more involvement from everybody, the better. You're gonna have to, if you're running the meeting, guide it where you, you know, continue to guide it down the path of, of where it needs to go. Keep it, keep everybody on task. But if you have an idea and someone in the meeting has an idea that's the same and they think of it great that's fantastic that will help them be more bought in to the idea in general that you know so the more involvement that you can incorporate while still accomplishing the goal of what you want to accomplish you know not letting it and what I mean by that is not letting it get too out of hand, too, too free, like some left field crazy ideas. You don't need like that, like, you know, keep it in line with what you ultimately want to come out of this meeting and your bigger goal and, and towards the, uh, the mission that you want to accomplish, but get everybody involved as much as possible. Cause that's going to make them more vested in it. Um, you're going to feel better about it because you're going to feel like you're not just telling everybody what to do and that it's a team effort and it's a lot more fun when everybody's moving together towards something in general. So outline agenda. So we're going to talk about, we're going to, we're going to lay it out like this. This is actually what we talked about the other day, part of it. Manual, schedule. So manual is a handyman, does a lot of work for us. We have him doing work at random jobs all over the place. Um, just whatever needs to get done, he's the dude to get it done. And he does a great job at that. How can we get to the next level with manual? Right now, he talks to all of us. He reports to all of us sort of, cause it wasn't clearly defined. So that's one thing that we want to define is 
who does who report to who? But that that wasn't the main thing here. But we want to, we want one thing we wanted to establish was that. So we'll go we'll dive deeper, right? So that's a that's a it's a broader topic. Oh, I've got space there because I'm we're gonna we're gonna dive into it then. Marketing. Um, raising capital. Um, and what else was another one? Uh, brand awareness. And these, <clears throat> this meeting, agenda, outline, topic, uh, layout, this works with one person. You can have a meeting with yourself. You can apply this, this format and have a meeting with yourself about your business and it works the same as far as like resolving issues. That's what it's all about. Uh, so here's how I like to do it. We've got an outline. I know what my part's going to be, but we're going to talk about this. We're going to have actually a conversation. We're going to have a dialogue, an exchange about each of these items. And I'm going to put those on the board as we do that. So whoever's facilitating the meeting, myself, putting this up there, these are the things we want to talk about. I've got some ideas. Um, I encourage my partners also, if they want to, they're able, you know, they can, they're more than welcome, of course, to, to add to the agenda too at the beginning of the meeting, uh, if they want to. Um, and then we just start covering topics and I'll get into a little bit. This is a general meeting thing. And then I'll get into some specifics around a real estate company and how to run that. So we structure our outline slash agenda, something like this, high level. When you say high level, it's like zoomed out, right? So we're looking from way down from flying into plane, looking at the map view. And then we have a discussion. We have a discussion around these things. Now, of course, you want to get started, you can get started with an icebreaker if you want and all that. I'm not getting into all that stuff. You know, I miss, this is an effective meeting, okay? so. Everybody's already friends there. If you want an icebreaker, look up an icebreaker on the internet, do something like that. A fun one is uh, start complimenting, start talking behind someone's back in front of them about them to somebody else there, but say something good about them. Be like, you know that one guy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. He's always just closing deals. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. So anyway, have some fun. Have a little bit of a you know icebreaker. Hey, how's it going? But then get down to business, and that's what we're focusing on here. So, all right. So, and that's what this allows you to do. It's like okay. So today on the agenda, here's what we've got. Let's get right into it. So we're talking about manual schedule. So then the things that come up in the conversation about that, basically, what what are we basically want to resolve our concern get resolved issues get resolved the whole thing is resolution <clears throat> so then we figure out okay what's the best way oh here's one that we actually figured out <clears throat> oh great example this was literally happened on Tuesday. Here's another meeting tip, another side tip. I'm thinking of these along the way. When you have meetings, you can hold them randomly. That's great. Call them as needed, but a structured meeting time, you know, time, uh, a weekly time, you know, okay, for example, I meet with my team every Tuesday, 2 p.m. to talk about the business. And it's that way, no matter whether I'm there or not. You know, there's there's four of us and whoever's there is there and whoever's not is not. Of course, we all try to make it, but 
one of our partners is out of town right now. He's living it up in Mexico. And that's one of the benefits too of doing business with partners is everything doesn't fall on your shoulders all the time. And you can um, actually take time off and do things like that. So hold a meeting with your team consistently at the same time weekly. And um, it just establishes that culture, that rhythm, that you're, you know, this is what happens, you know, and then if I'm not there, they update me. Um, if one of us, you know, one of them is not there, we update them and the business continues to evolve. We've had a lot of changes since Raul has been out of town. We've been doing quite a bit, quite a bit of stuff. It's been like two weeks. He'll be back to, in about a week from now. And he's going to come back and be like, wow, you guys got a lot done. Like a lot changed. It doesn't freeze because, because someone leaves and a big contributing factor is the weekly meetings. They're there. They're consistent. <clears throat> and on with your own business, same thing. You should be meeting and evaluating. If you wear all the hats, you should still be having a meeting. Like you may not call it a meeting, but you should still be looking at your business. What are the things you're, you you want to resolve? Unless you're resolving them as you go, you know, unless it's like that. But still, I bet there's always stuff that you you know you don't have time to do in the in the moment, and it carries over. So taking time to evaluate, it's a it's a must. You've got to look at okay, what's working, what's not working, what can I do better. So here, actual thing here is <clears throat> manual comes by for his paycheck gets paid on Tuesdays every week. I'm not, I work crazy hours. Sometimes I'm up till four in the morning submitting offers. Just, you know, I may not, it's not the most effective, efficient use of my time to have to be here at nine 30 in the morning on a Tuesday morning to hand him a check. I may not be here. I may be out of town, you know? So, well, he just started. So that's, you know, it's a new thing. It's a new issue. It's a new concern that came up as of a res result of, of growing and expanding. And, and so we're trying to think, okay, how can we resolve this issue? And this is a discussion I'm having with my, with my partners, real life, you know, this is the stuff like you got to resolve. It might seem like, Oh, that seems so simple. So I'm like, well, I could put a, a drop box on the side of the building. And that would be something, you know, he could have a key. He's already got, you know, we trust him. He's got a credit card. He's got, you know, access to our properties. So he could have a key to a Dropbox, totally fine. Um, that's one way. That was my kind of solution, my like analog solution. And then Eddie is like, what about direct deposit? And we're like, oh, yeah. Because I'd still have to write the check. I'd still physically have to write it out. I would still have to go and put it in the box. So once a week, I'm still doing this. How long does that take? <clears throat> it takes at least 90 seconds to write a check in the, in the business checkbook thing. Cause you got to write, and then you write the, the memo thing and it's like writing the check twice. So it's probably almost like two minutes. How many times, two times a week, say two minutes plus, okay, you got to open it up, got to have a pen. So we'll say two minutes times 52, right? <clears throat> That's saving me an hour, 104 minutes a year. Right there, 104 minutes is how much I spend in a year. <clears throat> That's almost, that's 1.73 hours. That's like two hours a year wasted on something dumb <clears throat> that the main issue was just to get, the main thing we wanted to resolve, the main thing I wanted to resolve was just to get him his paycheck on time on, on Tuesday morning. But because we brought it up, had a discussion, okay, what do we do? Came up with direct deposit. So not only did we resolve that, but I actually got almost two hours of my life back literally because of an idea from a partner from the open discussion format. Boom, we resolved that. 
man, met with Manuel later in the day. Are you cool with direct deposit? And he's like, yeah, I'm cool. Guess who else saves time? More than two minutes. Now every trip to the bank is saved for Manuel. He's saving like 15 minutes. 15. That's 780 minutes. He's saving 13 hours a year. Everybody is better off right there because of that. So things like that, boom, they get resolved. Marketing, we're, we were talking about marketing. <clears throat> How can we get more exposure in the community? By the way, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat box. If you're on the, if you're over here, if I'm looking at you over here and you're on the Facebook, you can arrive over here on the Zoom side and it's um, a better platform in my opinion much better you're able and I'm also looking directly at you so so another agenda item we wanted to talk about was marketing and I'm using real the real things we were talking about too because we're trying to get we're trying to be effective right so I'm not just talking about how to run a meeting this is an example of our real estate meeting so hopefully any issues you may come across in the future that are related to this or have come across already might be like extra bonus material in there. So we're talking about marketing, also brand awareness. Um, and sometimes that'll happen. You'll put one thing down or you'll put multiple things down and your one discussion ends up knocking out multiple agenda things. So marketing, how can we get more exposure in the community? How can we get our name out there? We just came together as a group at the beginning of this year as premier real estate group and, um, we are growing rapidly and I have uh, big goals of uh, getting on the Inc. 5000 list um, as one of the fastest um, growing companies in the US in the coming next few years. And I attribute that to a huge part of it to we, the people that got together, we already knew what we were doing. So that's played into it huge. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do this, you know, three years ago by any means. I was still figuring stuff out. So I don't feel like, you know, any kind of way because of that. It's the experience and the, the knowledge and stuff that that's it's that's it. That's it's the know how. Like you could now I could be you could take everything away from me, drop me off in any city in the US. And I will be able to figure out how to build a real estate business there within a year because I know how now. So that's what's contributed a lot. But there's things within that, like the fact that we are all massive action takers, like we all take massive action. So that's played into it as well. And an example of that is had this, this meeting, this agenda item, we started talking about all sorts of different ideas. Um, the Chamber of Commerce was brought up, joining the Chamber of Commerce, which is something that I had done before. Sarah says it will happen for sure. Yes, one hundo. Joining the Chamber of Commerce is something I wasn't familiar with, never uh, had done that before, so I wasn't really sure what was included. Yeah, I'd heard about it, but uh, John's got experience with that. He's like, all right, why don't we do that? We're like, okay, cool. So again, we have our concern, like how do we get, how do we get more brand awareness? How do we get more um, eyes on our business, you know, potentially to get, I mean, ultimately to get more deals and more, more business, help more people, serve more clients. So our, our issue is how do we get more exposure? One of those resolutions was Join the Chamber of Commerce. Boom, came up with that, agreed upon it, get everybody's agreements, especially as a facilitator. Gaining people's agreements as you go through it, participants' agreements, everybody in there, the more you can, same thing like with getting them talking, you get them, everybody more on board. Um, so we had an idea, we had a plan, we executed on the plan today, two days later, Kara from the Santa Maria Chamber of Commerce came over to our office, visited us, and we signed up and joined right then and there. So 48 hours later from concept, from problem, 
from problem to concept to execution and we're there. And it wasn't even expensive, 310 bucks. Um, you know, they have all sorts of different sponsorship packages, but you know, you get in there for 310 bucks and then you go from there and for a year and there's all, and so I didn't really know, you know, what's included in this stuff, but it turns out that there's uh, at least once monthly business mixers for different business owners. There's 800 and something of them uh, members in this one. So you get to know local business owners, um, which is great. Um, it's kind of cool being a local business owner, being a small business owner, in my opinion, is one of the coolest things that you can do because it helps your community. You're serving your local community and you're like, you're living the dream. You're living the, the American dream. Like at the level, it doesn't have to be like a head of a huge company. It's like just at that level in, in the, in the, this, this country was built on small business and family mom and pop shops. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and, uh, and it's kind of cool. It's almost like a cool kids club. Cause you're in the bank and you're in the business line. And you're like, Oh, what kind of business you own? Um, and uh, just start a conversation like that. At least I look at it that way. And I use that that way. I flex that. I, I take advantage of that aspect of it. Like when you're a local business owner, you, you know, that it's, you're, it puts you in a different club. It puts you in like, okay, you have, you concern, you, you have concerns about the local economy. By default, you have concerns about your city. You, you get all of those, that part of it without being a politician. So it's like, it's great. Um, and you can relate to other people and other business owners. And these people want to invest. These people have money. These people will get to know you. You become friends. You've got common ground already. And they'll be interested in what you do and you just start talking about what you do. And just by nature of having the conversation about what you do, which is, you know, buy and fix and flip houses. Oh, how do you do that? Oh, well, you know, we work with private lenders or we work with, um, you know, uh, private capital and when we provide a 10 to 12% return to our private investors and and we make some money in the process and you know just make it super conversational people will want to get in on that and so that's a huge benefit of chamber of commerce another thing is local business events you know we want to get our name out there not just with other local business owners but with the community in general um, basically we want to brainwash <laughs> people um, in a good way of who we are and what we do. We want to be top of mind. We want them to think of Premier. If they think of real estate in California on the Central Coast, start, starting with Santa Maria, wherever your backyard is, wherever you're based, start there and just expand. We want them to think of Premier. So how does that happen? Well, getting our, getting our face out there getting our as much as exposure as we can we're going to get exposure on their website we're going to get exposure at local events we can put our banner up um and that's why the logo is important um you can do a ton of business without without a logo but if you're trying to do what i'm trying to do which is take over the entire central coast and what i'm doing is it's you got to go all out same thing with friendly flipper brand. You got to put that it's in my profile picture for a reason. It's the brainwash people that to associate them, that logo with me in this. And, and that's in a good way, brainwash in a good way. Um, just to, to, to just, so just like tattoo that in their mind that it's like, that's associated. So we got the premier logo and you don't have to trip too much about what it is. It could be something like that, or it could be something text-based, you know, like uh, looking for Intuit or something, you know, uh, uh, square reader. It can be fancy, oh, like, look, Casio, right? Simple, 
but it's recognition. It's it, you pick something and you stick to it. It doesn't have, you know, it could be a complete logo, could just be words in a certain font. It could be a combination of the two. Just pick something and roll with it. And that's so much more important than trying to figure out the perfect thing. Try to figure, figure out what you want, but execute on it. You can change later. Rebranding is not something you want to do all the time, but it's not that important either. So, so don't overthink it to the point. I mean, just get something and roll with it. Is Casio super cool? No, it's just, it's Casio. It is what it is. It just, that's what it is. It's like, It, it, it is, it's something, it has an identity. It has something unique. It's not broccoli. It's not lemons. It's not, um, kiwis. It's not like potatoes, you know what I mean? Generic. It's something. It doesn't matter what it is. Just be something. Don't be generic. <clears throat> and that's the beginning of a brand of establishing a, but really, <clears throat> your brand should be your story, you know, should incorporate your story. And, and if that's what you want it, you know, to be your, your mission and bigger and bigger. But as far as stationary business cards, logo, putting your message out there, just choose something and roll with it. How did Red Bull become cool? If you think it's cool, a lot of people do, I guess, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly cool in a lot of people's eyes just because, it became cool. I mean, it could have been like Purple Eagle and it could have been just as cool. I mean, Red Bull sounds probably cooler than Purple Eagle, but you get the idea. Like it doesn't matter what as much as that it matters that it is something and it's something unique. <clears throat> so don't hesitate too much on that. Don't overthink it. Pick something, roll with it, get it going and um, get the momentum, just move it, move it, move it. That's what was so cool about 48 hours later, we're in the Chamber of Commerce. It's just about taking massive action <clears throat> and not being afraid to change direction if you have to as you move forward. Not worrying about getting that perfect shot from here all the way to where you wanna go but being just concerned with going. And even if I'm going this direction, I'm willing to go back that way. It's okay. No big deal. No harm, no foul. It's cool. <clears throat> just resolving issues. And then what, do, what am I doing? Boom, who's doing it? We want to know who's, who's doing these things though, too. So in the resolutions, you know, what's the resolution? Who is responsible for it? Everybody, <clears throat> everything needs to be owned by somebody. Otherwise it gets, that is the most efficient way. Everybody an effective way. That everything needs to get owned by somebody. Something has to, there has to be somebody that's in charge of that. Not two people, one person. Not three, one. There can be second in command. There can be a backup. But there's not two, there's not two presidents. There's a vice president and a president. There's a backup. There's not, you know, there's, there, what's another example? Oh, shout out in the studio audience. Well, you there. Now, what's another example of a, uh, there's a, Okay, up the police, okay, the cops, they all, they report to a, a supervisor. They know who they report to. In the army, you know who you report to. You know, like there's, or who is a task assigned to. It just, it's so, there's either definite ownership. 
I don't know why I can't think of any, another good example, but, but you get the concept. There's definite ownership or there's not. There, it's, it's, it's one or the other. And it's either for sure and then there's the backup. That's okay. But if there's two, it's not for sure. Unless it's both. But that's not efficient. Like you could have, you could have the same person. You could have two people in charge of one task and they could both do it, but then you're doing double duty. And then it's still not good because one person's going to think it takes, it takes, I can, I have more, I won't take it. If it's all on me, it's all on me, no matter what. If there's an ability to cast blame on somebody else who also shares responsibility, there's a possibility that I'm not going to do as good as a job as, as if it was all on me. And there's also, and it's more than a possibility. It's a likelihood. It's more than likely over time, you got two people owning something. It falls on one person. It needs to fall on one person. So for it to get done, because that's what's effective. Because then the next meeting you follow up, Eddie, what's going on with this? Boom, Eddie has an answer. If Eddie wasn't assigned to that, what's going on with this? Oh, well, I checked on, I talked to this guy this day. Someone else talked to this guy this day. You know, uh, you don't know. Structure. There's no structure. There's no, that's gotta be, it's gotta be definite. People need to own stuff. And it puts the pressure. When you own it, it's, it's on you. It literally is on you. And yeah, it is on you. So you get the glory or you get the, if you don't perform, you, it, why didn't you perform? Like it was on you to perform what happened, but that's what you, that's what you, any day, any day, take that. Take the ability to own something over the inability to control it. It's a choice. And take ownership over the good or the bad. Don't be afraid. You're going to have, you're going to succeed 80% of the time or more when it comes down to it with things like this. So don't be afraid about those 20%, those times that are going to help you grow when you have to come back to the table and say, I didn't get this done. Because that's how you're going to get through further along and avoid those in the future. You don't, you won't grow unless you go that, you know, you won't ever get stronger unless you lift heavier weight. It's the same thing conceptually. It's the same thing with anything you work at in life, bigger problems, the bigger the problem, the heavier the weight metaphorically. got it I'll give you some bonuses you get the main idea this is the main idea how to run a good meeting um, go through the agenda then you want to circle back at the round okay open up got your opener your icebreaker get into it go through your issues have the conversation what what's the issue who's owning it when is it going to be resolved you know what's the resolution The resolution might be I'll report back in a week. I'm going to do some research, but there's something you've got to a point where you can take a step forward. That's what resolution means. It doesn't mean solving the world's problems in their entirety or your businesses. It's just, it just means that you've removed whatever is holding you back from that point to taking the very next step. And that's all you gotta, that's all you gotta get for. That's all you have to, it's all you want to accomplish it, each one of those. And at the end, at the end of the meeting, you know, perfect. Some, you can summarize, you can go through, make sure everybody's got, okay, boom, you're taking care of this. All right, great, perfect, that. Okay, you got this taken care of. Okay, perfect, you see this there. You know, obviously, depending on how much you talked about it. Um, and then close with any, you know, any final thoughts, anything, um, you know, and just make it an active conversation. <clears throat> um, 
But the main thing that you want to accomplish is resolution so then you can go take action. Everybody at the end of the meeting should be ready to go take action and be ready to execute. The whole point of the meeting is to resolve issues so then you can keep taking action. So we don't, we don't want to lose sight of our main to accomplish what? We want to resolve issues. We want to pull out the stops. Every meeting should be about pulling out the stops, moving forward. And there's a big overarching thing here that I haven't said it, I don't think. I haven't intentionally said it. It's a huge benefit of all this. It's happening throughout this entire thing. It's why we want to get everybody involved. We want to get people talking. We want to get answers and resolutions from, every, from everybody. What is it? It's the C word. Communication. That's it, folks. Communication. As you resolve these issues, yes, you're resolving those issues, but as you communicate and work through these, you're operating more and more effectively as a unit, cohesively as a team, and moving forward. Communication. It's huge. Your business will not survive without it. If your business will not survive without it, just think about how much the potential for it to excel if it's happening as effectively as possible. Or if it's on that track. I don't know if it can ever be as effective as possible, but it's always the idea is to move towards that and get closer and closer. So there you have it, folks. Nothing too crazy. Pretty straightforward, in fact. Doesn't take anything magic. It's just about staying on task. Want to take it to the next level? How much time do you want to spend on this? That happens at 5. This happens at 5.10 or sooner, this happens at 520, you can do that too. That'll even keep you more on task. Simple and effective. Think simple and effective. Most things in life and in business can be solved simply and effectively and don't need to be overcomplicated. If you've got any questions, please do drop them. Drop them in the flip chat. Drop them in the forum. Forum? I haven't seen a forum since 2001. No, drop them in the Facebook group. Be sure to answer those. And if there's anything I can help you with, with throughout the week, let me know in the flip chat. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. and. Thank you for joining in on the replay if you're watching the replay. And I will see you all very soon on the flip side. See y'all. Peace out.